right hello good morning good afternoon good evening i greet you in the name of our lord jesus christ a belly light or a belly the servant you you, you must have known her some of you who are consistently watching our videos here must have seen us post videos few in few occasions and um has always been sound in the things that she has said now a testimony on how she overcame pornography and masturbation. I'm sure that this will help a lot of people out there. You now, so many of us suffer these things in the in our closet. We we struggle with it because it is not something that you are proud of. Uh, to the point that even some preachers have said something that have made you stay okay on it. That it doesn't okay since. It is not sin. Some tell you that it is not sin against God. It is not a sin against your spirit. That it is a sin against your body. Sexual immorality is a sin against your body. So God has nothing to do with it. The Bible has told us to present our bodies, you know, as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto the Lord. And so it is very, very important we balance the scriptures, cherry picking scriptures to use it and manipulate our ways maybe in things we are doing we are guilty of and because of the fact that we are doing it we don't want to stand on the truth and tell the people the very truth of the word now here she tells us how she was able to overcome the slavery of masturbation and pornography i'd like you to kindly share this video please many people are suffering this God bless you. Listen to the belly light. You are welcome to the End Time Truth Television, the channel for the lovers of truth, for the truth of the end time. So if you are a lover of truth, give us a subscription and God bless you. Shalom. Hello and welcome to this channel. First of all, I want to apologize for how throaty and cookie I sound. I am currently recovering from the flu and there was just an urgency in my heart to record this video and put it out. So I didn't want to delay it and so I apologize for how rough I might be sounding throughout the video. As you can already tell from the title of this video, I want to talk about how God gave me victory over masturbation and pornography, which was there were things that I struggled with for about six to eight years until God in his mercy and loving kindness delivered me and gave me freedom from, from all of it, really. And by the grace of God, I have been free for about four plus years now to the glory of God. Um, first of all, let me just start by saying that this video is recorded or is specifically created for those who believers who are already in Christ and still find themselves struggling with these things because it goes without saying Jesus is the answer before we even start to talk about anything else it had he's the foundation before we proceed to all of the other jara that we have to add or that we would add Jesus is the foundation it is if any man be in Christ so I can't give you a bunch of do's and don'ts and say, oh, do this, do that, then you'll be free. I would be lying to you because I tried those things. I tried methods. I tried do's and don'ts. I tried, I tried all of these things and none of it worked for me. Jesus was my solution. Jesus was my answer. Jesus was my deliverance. Jesus was my freedom. So it goes without saying that you have to be born again. You have to believe in the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus. And then, and then receive him into your life as Lord and Savior. And now when we talk about receiving him into your life as, as Lord, what I'm trying to say is you need to be willing to leave the world behind. Leave all the, all the attractions and pleasures of the world behind. Because consequentially, it profits nothing. The world wants to destroy you. The world, the world wants you to be as far away from God as possible because the farther you are from him, the more in bondage you have. True freedom and true deliverance is only in Christ Jesus. There's no other way. So it goes without saying that you have to be born again. You have to be willing to leave the world behind. And so I'm, I am recording this video um, with believers who are already in Christ um, in mind and who are still struggling with these things because for me, 
I was already born again, but was still struggling with masturbation. Now, a little background story. I said yes to Jesus on the 1st of September, 2016. And I still remember this very beautiful day. It was, it's the best decision I've ever made in my life. And I was, like I said, I was struggling with this way before then. And my, my, what I thought was, oh, if I get born again, then I would be totally done with this and I wouldn't struggle with masturbation and pornography ever again in my life. Now that I'm in Christ, I would never be tempted, I would never get sexual urges, all the things would just automatically die. That was what I thought. But that wasn't what I found to be true because it, it honestly doesn't work that way. Many of these things that we've learned, many of these habits and addictions that we picked, we've picked up, it took time. For, for, for them to build up in our in our souls to the point where it becomes a yoke, it becomes an addiction. And so definitely it will take some time for us to begin to pull down those strongholds. It will not just automatically happen overnight. Things will not just automatically change overnight. Yes, you will receive, you believing in Jesus, receiving him into your heart gives you new life. It gives you the God life, which we call the Zoe, the life of God. The life of God, the life that is above sin, the life that is above the, the consequences and the power of sin, the life that, 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 that puts you above and beyond anything that is on this realm, you receive that life. But it doesn't mean that you may not still struggle and, you know, there may be no, you may not sleep sometimes. It doesn't usually happen like that. Many times we find that we are born again, we've said yes to Jesus, but, you know, we still struggle with the things that we were struggling with before we said yes. So if you're in that position, I don't want you to doubt your salvation. Oh, I'm, I'm, already, I'm already born again. I thought I was already saved. Why am I still um, dealing with these things? Why am I still struggling with these things? It happens. It will take time. But you've, you've gotten the first step right. And that is receiving the life of God. Because it is that God life that sponsors everything else. It is that life of God that sponsors everything else. Jesus said that it, it that 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 water that I will give him will be like a fountain springing up to eternal life. So it is that God life that sponsors all of the other things. But that has to be the foundation. So I said yes to Jesus, like I said, on the 1st of September 2016, but I was still struggling with this with this thing. You know, I was still going back to watch porn. I was still going back to to, to masturbate. And each time I would say, Lord, I'm sorry. I, I actually at the at a point I've said this before for some of you who might have heard my testimony before now. I've said this before that I I actually thought that I had a special demon that <laughs> that that had to be specially cast out and you know my bonnet my 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 decision to become born again was just not enough to deal with that i thought so many things i thought i thought that there was something specially wrong with me because i mean i'm already born again why am i still struggling with this why do i still find it difficult to say no to my flesh until one day until one day i it was it was during morning devotion and i got up to study my Bible and to pray and that morning I happened to be studying the book of Colossians chapter 3 and so just like any other normal morning I started to read my Bible and to study until I got to Colossians chapter 3 verse 3 and I remember I have my Bible open here so I just want to quickly <laughs> open to it and I remember that morning I was reading with the um, I was reading that scripture, Colossians 3, with the Amplified Translation. And I got to Colossians chapter 3, verse 3. Let me just start from verse 1, so that, for context. Now, Colossians 3, verse 1. Therefore, if you have been raised with Christ, keep seeking the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind and keep focused habitually on the things that are above not on the things that are on the earth. Listen, Colossians 3 verse 3 says, For as far as this world is concerned, you have died, and your new life is now hidden with Christ in God. This was the point where I got to. I, I, I'm sure that I had read this scripture before that time, but that particular morning, it just jumped out to me. I was seeing, for as far as this world and all its desires and 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 yokes and addictions as far as they are concerned i have died to it and my new life is now hidden in christ in god the father i remember that i read the scripture and i i got up 
I got up and I started to pace around the living room because that was where I was having this devotion. I started to pace around around the, the living room and I just kept on repeating to myself, I have died. I have died to the world. I am no longer I am no longer a slave to the things on this earth. I am no longer a slave to my flesh. I am no longer I I, I, I was asking myself questions and answering it by myself. So I was saying something, it was something like, so I have died to masturbation. So I have died to so so pornography no longer has a hold over me. So I have truly died. My life is now hidden in Christ. So any anything at all that wants to touch me has to first go through God the Father and pass through God the Son before it gets to me. It was, you, you needed, if you had seen me doing this that morning, you know, I think about this day a lot and I just, my, my, even right now thinking about it, my, I just feel my heart swelling with so much joy because I found this and it was like someone gave me a golden key. I said, so I have died. I kept on going back to read it to be sure that I, it was what I, I mean, I, I really saw right. As far as the world is concerned, you are dead to it. So I am no longer alive to this world, but now I am alive in Christ and Christ in God the Father. This is now my reality. I have died to the world. I have died to the world. I, I kept on pacing and saying, Lord, so this is it. You would think I won the lottery. This is it. I have truly died. This is, this is, this is really the end. This is what you needed me to see. This is what you needed me to see to finally be done with this, this addiction that, that had me bound for years. Lord, this is what you needed me to see that I have died to the world. I, many times, eh, I, th I think that we believers, Christians, do not understand how important. See, your real self is found in what the word of God says you are. Your real self is found in who the word of God says you are. You see... We do not just read the Bible for information. We read for transformation. The Bible, the word of God is not just here for information, but it's here to transform you. It's the reason why Romans 12 says we should not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our minds. How do we renew our minds? By the word of God. The Bible is not just here to inform you. The word of God is not just here to inform you. It wants to transform you. So when you stay away from the word, you are staying away from the only thing that has the power to... Listen, you can pray and pray and pray and pray. But I'm telling you, the Bible says, the entrance of your word gives light and understanding to the simple. You know, you know what we do when we pray without, without, um, without knowledge of the word? Is, is like a, a, a man of... Is like a man... A woman who is trying to seek out a treasure who is trying to seek out a treasure in darkness you are looking for something precious and priceless and you're trying to look for it in darkness but you know what the Word of God does it gives you it gives you a candle the Word of God gives you a lamp and says go and find so you try if you cannot just if you are if you are praying without knowledge or praying without without um, understanding of the Word of God you are praying without light and that doesn't do much for you. Listen, it's not, no, no, prayer and the word of God, they have to go. You can't separate them. One is not more important than the other. The word of God gives you knowledge, gives you light. And prayer is what you use to enforce that knowledge. It's what you use to establish that light in your life. So when you stay away from the word of God, you are doing yourself disservice. You are doing yourself disservice. And so just, this was what I found. This was what I found. And I, I just kept on. And this, this was what happened. I don't, know, I don't know how I need to do this. But I believe that it was the Holy Spirit that just moved expressly through me. When I caught this revelation. That as far as the world and the things here on earth are concerned. I have died to it. And that my new life is now hidden in Christ in God. When I, when I, when I grasped this revelation, you know, throughout that day, I, I consistently, I went, I, I kept going back to that scripture to just make sure that it had not disappeared. That was how, that was how much of an impact, that was how much of, of light this scripture, this scripture brought into my life. I kept on going back throughout the day to make sure that that, that scripture had not disappeared, that indeed I had truly died. But when I grasped this light, the Holy Spirit just moved through me and I just started to decree and declare that 
I, I, was no, I was no longer going to be yoked by any demon of lust or any demon of pornography or any demon of masturbation. I just started to, to, to make declarations. I have died to the world. I have died to the world. I am no longer a slave to my flesh. I am no longer a slave to sexual urges. I am no longer a slave to the desires of my flesh. I rebuke, I, 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 I started to rebuke every demon of lust that was at work. And I, I, I started to speak as one who knew that they had authority. I understood that I had authority. And so you needed to see me speaking to that demon of lust. I said, this is your end in my life. I, I am no longer going to be yoked by you anymore. Masturbation, I am no longer going to be yoked. See, this is what, this is what, this is what it does. When we, when we catch the word of God and the revelation in the word, it, 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 it sort of, um, it releases an energy into us. And we just want to, to speak out. We just want to begin to decree, make bold declarations. And what happens is that in, in, in making those bold declarations, you are, you are, you are, that's, that's where, that's where you win the battle. That's where you get the victory. You receive light. You make those declarations. And in those, in, in those declarations that you make is, is how you, it's not just enough to make declarations without light. It won't, it won't do much to you. Because what is happening is you are just speaking words that have not been, sponsored by by the spirit yet you are just speaking mere words that have not been sponsored by light yet so it's just like you are you are pretty much reading out a, a storybook or just a, a novel that's how much that's that's actually what it is when you are trying to just make declarations without proper understanding or without without um without light without the light of the word you're just making declarations oh i believe that you know we do we do that a lot Oh, I believe that I'm a child of God, but it's coming from here, just the head and not the heart. And until that, that, that energy has been released into your heart by the Holy Spirit and you make those, it's, it has to come from, from your, from the, from your bowels. It has to come from the depth of your heart so that when you are, when you are releasing it, it is, it's not your flesh that is doing the work. It's the Holy Spirit in you. It's coming from somewhere deep within, somewhere that is far greater than flesh. And so I began to make declarations that morning. I am done with lust. I am done with masturbation. I'm sweating so much. I am done with lust. I am done with masturbation. I am done with sexual immorality. I am done. I am free. I have died. Now, soldiers, does this mean that I never got tempted again? Of course not. I did. In fact, as, as, as at the time of making, as at the time that I'm making this video, I can, I can tell you that although they have drastically reduced a lot in intensity and in frequency, I still do get tempted from time to time. I mean, I use the internet in this 21st century. You open, you just open something as, as, as ordinary as Instagram or Twitter and pornography is staring you right in the face. So yes, I do get tempted. Yes, I get urges every once in a while. I'm a human being. I'm born again, but that did not take away my humanity. This blood still flows through my veins. I have the DNA of God now, which super, which supersedes and you know is greater than 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 any desire of the flesh or any craving of the flesh. So what 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 I'm trying to say is that even though I get these these urges, I have a greater life, and that is the life of God in me. That is the life that I have in Christ. So this life of God in me can stomp on this lower life, this lesser life of the flesh. So when this desire comes, this, when this desire comes, or when these urges come, I just begin to make declarations all over again. Or just remind myself, I have died. I mean, I have died. I can't, I can't go back to, to, to this, these things that Christ already, I have died. What am I, I mean, do you know what, do you know what the Bible says you are? The one who is, who is, who is a believer. The one who is a Christian, Revelations chapter 1, <coughs> 4 to 6, calls you king and priest. First Peter says that you are a royal priesthood and you are a holy nation. You know what that means? God sees you as royalty. My father is king. What does that make me? Think about it. And if, if that is the case, oh my God, if that is the case, if that is the case, then what, what does what does royalty what does a person who is royalty have to do with trash or garbage because if you think about it sin is filth is dirtiness is disgusting i mean 
I have, I have the world at my feet. I, I literally have the world. The Bible says that I, I have been seated with Christ in heavenly places. So my domain is above, meaning the world is at my feet. How can I climb down from that position and, and, and want to come and, I mean, no. The life that I now have in Christ is, is above this life. These, I'm telling you things that I tell myself. Because sometimes we have, to, we have to consciously and intentionally speak out the word so that we will remember it. It's not like you don't know it. But sometimes you have to speak it out loud to just remind yourself this is who you are. This is who God has made you. You cannot go back to, 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 to this thing that he has already delivered you from. See, Colossians 1.13, let me read it out to you. Colossians 1.13 says, For he has rescued us and has drawn us to himself from the dominion of darkness. He has brought us out from the dominion of darkness and has transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son. So what God did for me, he didn't just take darkness out of me. He, he brought me out of that. I was in a place when I was outside of Christ. I was in a place called darkness. I was in a domain called darkness. And the father took me out of that place and planted my feet in the domain of light, in the domain of his son, Jesus. So how can I once again go back to that place of darkness? These are, these are things that I, I consciously tell myself. You see, if you, if you don't remind, if you don't remind yourself of, of your identity in Christ, the devil will give you an identity that is not yours. And that's when he'll start to tell you things like, oh, you can never be truly free. Or you think that because you've gone one week without, porn, without um, watching porn or masturbating, that means that you are free. Stay there. You will still fall back in. And that's when fear, fear enters your heart and you are livid. You're asking yourself, God, I don't want to do this anymore. Am I truly... If you, if, you don't, if you don't enforce your identity, if you don't make conscious efforts, intentional efforts to remind yourself of who you now are in Christ, the devil will project onto you an identity that is not your own. And he will try to make you think that you are still bound when of a truth God has set you free. Galatians 5.1 It is for this freedom that Christ has set us free. It is for this freedom that Christ has set us free. If you don't see this, listen, as a born again Christian, you are free. But until you realize it and lay hold of it, until you, are, until you realize it and grasp it, it will do nothing for you. Well, I believe that the video has blessed you. Remember, nobody brought it to condemn you. Don't feel bad about this. There are so many other things that people are struggling with and if we trust christ enough he will bring us out of those slaveries out of those bondages right so this is not to shame you of course you've not told anybody about it i know a few persons who have you know contacted me and spoke we have spoken you know on these things and uh the grace of god got to a point that they were able actually to let go that was something she said very importantly that the strength comes from knowing Christ submitting your life to Christ when you have submitted yourself to Christ you abandon yourself at the foot of the cross then the power to do certain things that you couldn't have done as a dead sinner would be given to you because at that moment in time your spirit be become your spirit comes alive again it must be emphasized that being born again does not immune the your flesh doesn't does not numb your flesh does not numb the feelings that you have as a man that is still living in the flesh now those things will come those feelings those urges will come at times they would we cannot deny them they would but it is to whom we yield our members to that matters if we yield our members to God as instruments of, of righteousness, then he becomes our master and our Lord indeed. But if we do, I yield our members to the devil as instruments unto unrighteousness, to him we become slaves and servants. But we are no longer slaves to sin and Satan again. We have been translated, we have been transformed, we have been regenerated. We can now call God our Father. So in times of weaknesses, 
we have our father we can run to god bless you see you in the next video till then let me to you shalom